reaction of acids and bases when an acid reacts with the base what is the general tendency of this acid and base the general tendency is to neutralize each other is to remove the effect of each other by formation of salt and water so this reaction is called as neutralization reaction so general reaction can be written as acid plus base forms salt plus water so this is the general reaction if you are asked what is neutralization reaction simply you have to say when an acid reacts with the base forming salt and water this type of reaction is called as neutralization reaction we can show with the example let's take acid hcl one base we can say naoh i am taking an common acid and a common base what we will form is nacl which is salt and h2o which is water and this reaction is called as neutralization reaction this is activity 3.13 on page 26 let us discuss that take about 2 to 3 ml of dilute hydrochloric acid in a hard glass tube add 1 to 2 drops of phenolphthalein now what is phenolphthalein as i had earlier explained phenolphthalein is a synthetic type of indicator it is indicating whether the solution given is acid or base by change of color so 1 to 2 drops of phenolphthalein is added to hcl note the color add naoh solution drop by drop to the same test tube is there any color change now when i took hcl i had put phenolphthalein there was no color change but when i started putting naoh solution in it it started turning pink in color is there any color change yes the color changes to pink why do you think the color has changed now because in an acid the base is being added and the base shows pink color in phenolphthalein if you add dilute hcl to solution will you be able to note change in the color now in the solution in this test tube i had taken hcl i had dropped 2 to 3 drops of phenolphthalein okay now this was a colorless solution hcl doesn't have a color and phenolphthalein did not change any color in acid now i added naoh solution to it this started changing to pink color because phenolphthalein becomes pink in the presence of a base a, a stage will come when this pink color is there but the next moment the pink color starts fading okay now this the pink color when it starts fading if i go on adding hcl now it will so happen that pink color will change to colorless the last part of the activity what does it say it says that if i start adding hcl ag again to this test tube this pink color changes its color the change in the pink color is due to because now the acid content is more than the base content so when the acid and base neutralize each other they form salt and water and this is reaction is called as neutralization reaction we saw what is a neutralization reaction the acid reacts with base to form salt and water instead of acid if i take a metallic oxide or instead of base if i take a non metallic oxide what you will call it now you may say that the reactivity of base with a non metallic oxide is also a neutralization reaction because the non metallic oxides are acidic in nature and metallic oxides are basic in nature so instead of acid i can use non metallic oxide and instead of base i can use metallic oxide so these are also called as neutralization reaction then what is the difference between base and an alkali as i said bases which dissolve in water are called alkali 
they are soapy to touch they are bitter in taste they are very corrosive the common examples of alkali are sodium hydroxide and potassium hydroxide they dissolve in water forming alkali then which are the bases which are not alkali calcium hydroxide magnesium hydroxide ammonium hydroxide these are the bases which are not called as alkali because they are not dissolving in water next part we are going to see is whether the acids and base ionize or ionization of acids and bases this is activity 3.14 which we are going to discuss in the book take 25 ml of sugar solution in 100 ml beaker dip two carbon electrodes simple you have to take 100 little amount of sugar and uh, dissolve it in 100 ml of water connect the two electrodes to two terminals of 6 volt battery now you have to dip two carbon rods and connect it to a battery to the electric circuit now what do you observe whether the light is glowing or not in a bulb the electric circuit consists of a battery two wires a bulb and the carbon rod electrodes so if i am dipping it in sugar solution will the bulb glow yes the bulb will glow instead of sugar solution if i take glucose will the bulb glow no the glucose does not ionize in water methyl alcohol ethyl alcohol will it will the bulb glow alcohols do not ionize in water but if i take an acid hcl sulfuric acid will the bulb glow yes the bulb will glow because here the ionization of acid is taking place i'm going to explain what is ionization then if i dip it in sodium hydroxide or electrodes are put in sodium hydroxide will the bulb glow yes the bulb will glow i have given you so many examples sugar solution glucose any alcohol any acid or any base now in these cases alcohols and glucose do not ionize that means they do not separate into ions now when i say ions what are ions i o n s ion an ion is a charged particle if a substance under electric current is able to ionize then it can carry the electric current and therefore we can say the ionization is taking place connected to this is the next activity 3.15 how do the acids and bases behave in an aqueous solution now if i say hydrochloric acid is if it is in the um, gaseous state and if it is in the liquid state what is the difference hydrochloric acid also can exist in the uh, gaseous state now hydrochloric acid is hcl now this hcl if it wants to ionize or if it wants to separate into ions it will separate into hydrogen ions and chloride ions but this is possible only if it is in the aqueous solution form that means if it is in the presence of water if it is in the presence of water it will easily ionize into h plus ions and cl minus ions now what h plus ions when it forms a positive ion it is called a cation and when it forms a negative ion it forms the anion so this is called as cation and this is form called as anion cation shows the positive ion and anion shows the negative ion now this is possible hcl dissociating into hydrogen ion and chloride ion it is possible only in the presence of water if it is in the gaseous form it cannot ionize at all now if i say the hydro water what happens in water so if in this is present in water that means if i say the hydrogen ions are reacting with water to form a hydronium ion this hydronium ion actually is carrying the electric current or the positive charge hydronium ion is formed by water reacting with the hydrogen ion from any acid and therefore it forms it forms an ion which is called as 
हाइड्रोनियम आयन नाउ दिस इज इन द केस ऑफ एसिड इफ आई टेक एन ए ओ एच वॉट विल हैपन हाउ इट विल डिसोसिएट इट विल डिसोसिएट एन ए आयंस एंड हाइड्रोक्साइल आयंस नाउ दिस इज ऑल्सो कैट आयन एंड दिस इज एन आयन दिस इज कॉल्ड एज हाइड्रो ऑक्सिल आयन since it can dissociate into na plus and oh minus ions it can carry the electric current and therefore they are called as acids and bases which are very easy to dissociate into ions and a good conductor of electricity now with the help of this i can show you what is the general reaction using the ha and boh numbers so we saw that how the acids and bases can dissociate into hydrogen ions and hydroxyl ions hydrogen ions are produced by or generated by acid and hydroxyl ions are produced or generated by base if we take the general formula of neutralization reaction acids plus base forms salt and water now instead of acid if i write ha h stands for hydrogen now a can be in any anion it can be cl it can be br it can be i any anion which is negatively charged so we have written a general uh, alphabet that is ha it stands for hydrogen of acid and hydrogen is reacting with a anion which can be anything from here it is a negative negative ion then base base b stands for base and oh is a hydroxyl ion now here b can be a cation which can be sodium potassium calcium magnesium anything which is cation so ha reacts with boh forming ba that is the salt a b from here a from here it forms ba that is a salt h from here and oh from here it forms water so this is the general reaction with the help of we have we have the help of general reaction we have shown you how hydrogen ions and hydroxyl ions react together here forming water and this a stands for anion b stands for cation in the case of base now when we are talking about aqueous solution that means we have to mix acid with water then only the dissociation will take place but think whether acid should be added to water or water should be added to acid which is more safe and which should be done now if i say that acid should be drop drop by drop into the water it is very very safe water at room temperature is quite cool now i am putting acid drop by drop now you cannot take an acid bottle and pour it like this no large amount of heat will be generated when we have to dilute it acid should be uh, put in that bowl of water or test tube of water very very slowly drop by drop if i do something else that means if i take acid in a beaker or if i take acid in a test tube and i pour water what is happening the acid has the atoms or the ions which are moving very fast and they are at very high energy level we are putting water the water is cool in compared to acid and large amount of heat will be generated and when large amount of heat will be generated it will just blast or explode so for dilution purposes always acid should be added to water not the water to be added to acid so if i want to dilute an acid acid should be taken a beaker of water should be taken and slowly and slowly we have to put drop by drop the acid into the water this way the dilution may take place we are going to learn more about salts now how to find the ph of the salt now for that there is a table 3.4 which we are going to fill up by discussing here <laughs> 